In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can build an application that uses core data for its storage. We're going to create a simple to do app similar to the shopping list that we created early on in the course. But this time, instead of saving the data to a P list, we're going to use one of the key features of iOS development, which is core data. So let's start by creating a new project. We'll start with an empty application as we tend to do, and we'll call this one Core Shopping. Now the important thing is this little tick box here. If we're going to use core data, it's very important we select this when we create the project in the first place. So we're going to start off by building a storyboard for this because there's not one already. But before we do that, you can see it's added this core data entry, this XC data model ID. So, and also if you look in the app delegate, you'll see it's added a lot of extra information, lots of extra methods. In this one particular, it's a set of methods called the core data stack which we're going to be referencing when we build our application. So we'll start off by creating a new storyboard. And when we're about it, we'll add the new controller we're going to need. And we're going to use a table view so we need to make sure we subclass a UI table view controller. And we'll call this one list view controller. So now we have all the files we need to create our application. So the first thing I'm going to do is build the storyboard. I'm going to drag a navigation controller out. I'm going to specify my list view controller as its class. I'm going to have a prototype cell type subtitle. And I'm going to give it the reuse identifier cell, which matches the uh, view controller. So that's my interface pretty much set up. So let's fire it up to make sure it works. Before we do that, we need to make sure we specify the main interface in deployment info and we need to go into the app delegate and we need to delete a method from there and we need to go to my list view controller.m and in it with style can also go so we can test this to make sure it works And that looks good. My next job is to configure my core data model. And I choose the file. You can see I have no entities at all. I'm going to add an entity. And I'm going to call the entity item. I need two attributes. I'm going to have a name attribute, which is going to be a string. I'm going to have a date added attribute which is going to be of type date and that's my data model finished but before we leave this screen I'm going to go to the editor menu and create my NS managed object subclass so I can handle this one through a custom subclass call shopping I want to manage the item entity and I'll save that into my project and there we have my item.h my item.m, which I'll be using a bit later on in the demonstration. Right, before we go any further, I need to make sure that I implement the NS fetched results controller delegate methods. And this is important because this will get fired when we interact with our core data. So I'm going to implement NS fetched results controller delegate. 
and in my implementation file I'm going to implement those three methods. So let's put a pragma mark in so we can break our code up. So there's no misunderstanding of what it does. And I need to implement three different methods. Controller will change content. Controller did change contents when we finished. And the final one out of the four controller did change object at index path and there's my three NSFetch results controller delegate methods so these are the easy ones to implement I need to begin updates when it will change the content and I need to end updates when it has changed the content, when it did change the content. This one's a bit more complicated because there's four different things that can happen. We can um, insert, delete, we can move, and we can update. So we need to handle each of these separately. So we're going to have to have four if statements. Type is equal to ns fetched results fetch results um, change insert that's an insert we need to do something there. We've got change delete. We need to do something there as well. Uh, we're going to have to have move, because we might want to move one of our rows. And finally, we're going to have update in case one of the, one of the um, into these changes. Like so. So let's handle these one at a time. So if we're going to insert self.table view insert rows at index paths. We've only got one row to insert, so we need to create an NS array, array with object singular, and the object is going to be the index path, the index path that we have um, here. With our animation, UI table row animation fade. That will do. And if it's delete, we need to obviously delete the row. Delete rows at index paths. So again, we need to have an, an array. Array with object. Next path again with our animation UI table animation fade. Now moving, we've got to do two things. We've got to delete one of the rows, and we've also got to insert a row as well.
I'm going to delete is the old index path. So animation UI table animation fade. And we also, oops. And we need to insert. Array object, and this is the um, new index path. And the new index path is just there. There's the original index path and the new one. Those both get passed if it's a move. And the update will leave for the time being. We now need to make sure we create our managed object. So we're going to create some private properties. We need an NS managed object context which we'll call context and we also need an NS result results controller and that's going to be the equivalent of our NS mutable array when we did this stuff before so we'll call this one results we need to synthesize those So now we need to put some code in view did load. So we can we can basically do all the code to set up this NS fetch results controller, which will contain our core data information. It will contain effectively an array of, of the objects. So we need to import our app delegate because that's where all the core data information is stored. Point to the app delegate, cast it into an app delegate object, shared application, delegate. That returns an app delegate object. Then we set up the context because this is very important when we work with core data. And there's our context set up. Now we need to create a series of objects to allow us to access that data. And let's fetch request. Run the, create a new one of those, run the initializer. The NS enter the description. For name, the name of the entity is item. Remember from our data store in managed
in manage object context well, we know what that is self dot context which we've just set up so we take the request we call the set entity look at your notes if you're not sure how this works uh, we pass the entity to it then we have to have this ns sort descriptor even if we don't care about the order we need one of these things ns sort descriptor sort ns sort descriptor now we need it init with key and ascending and we're going to sort it by name which is the uh, attribute ascending yes and then we take the request object again and this time we call the set sort descriptors and it's an ns array just like we did with a single object with object <coughs> we pass it our sort and a sort descriptor then we need to set the batch size set the fetch batch size and we'll limit it to 20 records at a time it's a safe number and now we're ready to go. So we can set the self.results, which is what we're trying to do in the first place. NS fetched NS fetched results controller alloc. in it with fetch request which is our request manage object context which is self dot context key path don't care about that and the cache name anything we want So there's our self.results and now we need to tell the results to use this class as this class it's delegate so we can use the special delegate methods we just created we'll create an ns error object and then we simply call the method perform fetch and we'll pass it the address of the error like so so that will load all the data into the um, NS fetch results controller which is our private property so that's all now done So the next thing we need to do is set up the table view data source just like we do normally and here it is so as we normally do we set the sections to one this time we need to uh, with the calculation the rows in section we need to find the information on the section info obviously it's based on results sections which is turned to an array 
object at index and it's the section so we've now got the section info and we're going to return section info number of objects and that should return the correct number of objects in our data set <coughs> <coughs> now the self road index path obviously we need to retrieve the information from a particular entity object so that looks good so what we need to do obviously we have our item class which we created our subclass we need to import it like it so we retrieve the item which equals self.result just like we do for the um, uh, mutable array object at index path index path And then we can set assign the values. So we can say cell dot text label dot text equals item dot name. That's our attribute. And cell dot um, well. Let's create a let's create a, a, a string for the date. So we're going to have to use the uh, NS date formatter localized string from date, um, which will be item dot date added. Date style will be NS date formatter short style. And the time will be ns date formatter no star. We don't want the time to be displayed at all. So I can now say cell dot detail text label equals date string, and that should assign the date to the label dot text. So now I've assigned the um, text label and the detail text label to the item name and the textual representation of the date it was added. So this should run. Let's see what happens. But of course there's nothing there because the one thing we haven't done is we haven't got any way of adding items to our core data entity. So let's have a go at doing that That's our last step. So we're going to use an alert view. So I'm going to have to implement the UI alert view delegate. Like so. And I'm going to have to have a button to click to add a new item. So let's see what we can add. Our button item, shove it in there. Uh, let's make it an add button, like so. And let's switch to the control H, control drag. Uh, we'll have an action. Pass the UI bar button item, we'll call it add item and we'll connect back to our normal view. 
There we are, right at the bottom, there's our action. Okay, so I need to add some code to this one. So, you are alert view, alert view equals UI alert view, in it with title. message delegate will be self console button title will be add other button titles we don't want any Alert view, alert view style equals UI alert view style text input. And alert view show. So we should now have an alert view that pops up. Like so. And now we need to add the delegate method to respond to the alert view. Alert view clicked button at index like so and we're almost the home and dry now so item we need to create a new item entity description insert new object for entity name and the entity name is item manage object context is of course self dot context and then we set the properties item dot name equals alert view text field at index zero dot text and we'll um, we'll capitalize capitalize the string so they will start with a capital letter and the item dot date added which is an ns date equals ns date date then we simply need to save the changes self dot context save And before we do the final test, there's one small error which has crept in, which is when we insert a row, it should be the new index path, not the old index path that we're inserting. So let's test it. Click on add and you can see butter's been added. Capitalized, and you can see the items added perfectly. The final thing we're going to do is we're going to have a swipe to delete gesture so we can delete items from our list. And if you remember from a couple of weeks ago, it's very, very simple. So we're looking for the data source and delegates, the delegate methods. Here we are, override support conditional editing of the table view. So we're going to comment out that bit. And we return yes. 
and then we need to comment and comment this block. If editing style equals UI table view editing style delete. Now we're already deleting the rote index path because we did it using the other delegate methods. So we need to add some code to this to delete the item. So the first thing we need to do so the first thing we need to do is create is identify the item we want to delete. Self.results, which is our collection object at index path index path like so. Then we simply delete it from the context. It's very simple. We create the NS error object and then self dot context just as before save. delete those two lines completely. So this should now work. So as you can see it's remembered the items. So if I swipe and delete you can see the item has been deleted. Because we specify the sending order it inserts the items in alphabetical order as well for us. And that's the end of the demonstration. If you're at all unclear about how this works, I'd recommend you go through this demonstration yourself step by step and have a go at the lab exercise that's supplied on Moodle.